have, you know, a deep respect for the rule of law. I think it's one of the things that sort of sets us apart as a just and free society is an adherence to and the application of the rule of law. Uh, that, in a general sense, one, but in a criminal sense, particularly from both sides. And I've been doing criminal defense work exclusively now for the last, again, almost 11 years now. Um, I see this as an opportunity to go to the other side of the fence and not represent just individuals one at a time necessarily, which I have drawn a great deal of reward from. It's an integral part of the criminal justice system. You know, it takes all three to function effectively and function effectively for everybody in society. Uh, and this is an opportunity to, to bring my skills and experience to work for all of the people of Kent County, representing them in the criminal prosecution, uh, rather than just one defendant at a time. But there, there are things that I think could be improved in the functioning of the state's attorney's office. Um, chief among them is the relationship that the office has with local law enforcement. Um, for whatever reason, and again, I'm not in the office, so I don't know the particulars of it, but that relationship is not as strong or effective as it needs to be. It manifests itself, I think, in, as it does in any relationship where there's difficulty. There's a lack of communication and a lack of trust uh, flowing between them. And I, I'm not pointing any fingers. I don't know where it began or how, but it, it needs to be improved. Uh, and I have been, you know, I, I go up against police officers on a daily basis. I, I have a great deal of respect for the job that they have to do and the way in which they have to do it. Uh, and I think that they have, you know, at least it appears, I've received the endorsements of both the Maryland State Troopers Association, Local Lodge, uh, and the Kent County Fraternal Order of Police. So at least to some degree, I think that they have a measure of respect for my abilities and knowledge of the law. We're very fortunate in Kent County, as you talked about before this being a small area. There is not a lot of serious crime in Kent County. Um, we haven't had a murder in Kent County for four or five years now. Uh, there are very few rapes or other serious, uh, no attempted murders, very few first degree assaults. So generally speaking, I think that's you know, a credit to both the citizens of the county and the sheriff's office and the local police departments and the state police. But it's, a very, it's generally a very safe community um, and crime is relatively low uh, and not that serious when it occurs. There is, you know, and everybody is focused on it, there is a growing drug problem. Um, been growing for, for decades now, but it seems to have exploded uh, here recently, and that, that seems to be an area of concern in, in the community, uh, both the general community and the law enforcement community, and something that I think needs to be addressed in, in a different way. I think if you look at society in general, um, and look at some of the numbers. You know, 10% roughly of teenage boys in particular are on uh, speed to treat ADHD. Doctors, there was an article recently that doctors in America write approximately 300 million pain pill prescriptions a year. And another article I saw, I think from 2012, indicating that Americans who make up roughly 5% of the world population consume 80% of the pain medication consumed in the world. So there is a societal drug problem. Right? It would almost be more surprising to me if we didn't have the drug issues that we have uh, based on you know the underlying conditions that exist. And I think everybody wants to attack that, or I shouldn't say everybody, it seems that people think that that can be addressed only through law enforcement. And I think that that's a rather myopic view to take of the problem um, for a number of reasons. One, because I think it's a societal issue, not necessarily a law enforcement issue. Law enforcement is obviously a component of it, but it's not the whole ball of wax. Um, just for example, if you take a look at the most controlled environment in the world, perhaps the prison system, where everything is screened, everything is controlled, everything is regulated, they can't keep drugs out of there. All right? And to think that we're going to keep them out of a free, reasonably free, 
society you know, is not a realistic view to take either of the problem or the potential situ uh, solution. But I think because it's a societal problem, it needs to be addressed from a number of different perspectives and that all of those things, you know, the health department needs to be involved. Uh, the mental health is a component of it. Uh, social services needs to be involved. If we wait until people get to cr the criminal justice system, nine out of ten times you're probably too late to effectively address the problem anyway. And just locking people up, it, you know, uh, experience would say that that's probably not the most effective way to deal with it because we've been doing that for a long time now and the problem is getting worse not getting better. But I, I would tend to differentiate it uh, three ways. One, there are the people who are s selling and supplying the drugs. Those people should be prosecuted with everything that the criminal justice system can bring to bear on them because they're basically uh, perpetrating a crime against society. Um, but there are willing victims to that perpetration of a crime. There are people buying those drugs. Uh, and I would break those people down into two further categories. One, they're the people who are using the drugs. Now, I don't encourage anybody to use drugs. I think they're foolish. Uh, I think they're only doing harm to themselves. But as long as they're only harming themselves, I, I think that we should try to treat those people. The minute they steal from somebody to support their habit, they've forfeited any, you know, they're no longer doing something that is their own choice and their own body. They're inflicting that harm on society, an individual, and, the, and that is where the government, the law, the criminal justice system, the state's attorney's office should step in and prosecute them. I, I don't know that I have a day one kind of thing, but I have a general philosophy that I would bring with me that would start on day one, and that is that cases need to be evaluated and screened as soon as they come in the door and you know, sort of like a triage unit at a hospital to decide where resources need to be allocated and what needs to be addressed. If there are any deficiencies in the case, those things need to be investigated, communicated to the various police departments and officers involved to shore up any uh, areas that need to be covered, if there are any. Uh, to determine which cases, yeah. cases need to be evaluated, I think, two ways. One, how serious are they? And two, what's the evidence? Because that, in court, that's the bottom line. What can you prove? What can't you prove? Um, if cases cannot be proven, in other words, if the facts don't exist to prove a case, that's just the, that's the way it is and those things need to be dealt with. Um, and resolved early on. Conversely, where the facts exist to prove a case and where it's serious in nature, those cases should not be given away. All right? Significant plea offers should be made and a lot more cases should be, and if I were state's attorney, would be tried. To whatever extent the state's attorney's office is able to contribute to the safety and well-being of the community through the prosecution of criminal cases, uh, it should be done.